Hello everyone, welcome back to our Marketing Cloud API series. In this video, we will see what we need to set up in Marketing Cloud in order to work with the APIs. Primarily in Marketing Cloud, we will need to set up something known as an install package. For this, you will need to have access to the setup section of the BU where you need to set up the package. Okay, so now in Marketing Cloud, you need to go to uh, Setup, and under Setup, under Apps, you will see an option called Install Packages, and then you'll see the list of all the packages that have been installed uh, for this particular BU. Now, for our case, we're gonna create a new one, so click on the New button here. I'll give a sample name. API Series Integration Package. Let me go ahead and save that. Okay, so now we have a shell package. Right, and this is the uh, integration package that we will be using. But you'll notice that there's no components, so this is empty right now, so we cannot use it. So in order to add components, click on the Add Component button, and then you'll see a bunch of different component types that you can add to your package. Uh, and we will uh, the API integration, Marketing Cloud app, uh, Journey Builder activity, entry source, and and uh, custom content block. Now for our series, we are primarily interested in the API integration one, so that's the one that we will go ahead and click on. Click Next, and then you will be presented with three different integration types. Uh, one is the web app, the public app, and the server-to-server. -server. So let's take a look at like what's the difference between the three. Now, server-to-server -server integrations is, is when uh, your client application directly uh, interfaces with the, the marketing cloud uh, authorization server and the marketing cloud resource server. Right uh, behind the scenes, everything happens like you know. There's no user context, uh, so th it is like pretty straightforward. Uh, it will uh, you know, the request will come in with the client ID and the client secret, uh, which is something we'll take a look at in a few minutes from now. And then once it validates, uh, it's actually asking for an access token. So that's kind of like what will be returned back from the marketing cloud auth server if it's validated. And then the actual uh, API that we will be requesting will be using that access token. So we will send that to the marketing cloud resource server with our API saying that, hey, we got the access token from the authorization server. Uh, please go ahead and process our request. Okay, so that's the server to server uh, flow. Now, the web and the public app uh, is primarily like when you're you know, executing it on in a user context. So you need a user authorization step as well. Okay. So in this particular case, you, you might have a web application or a public application like a mobile one. Um, and in this particular case, you need to like um, have a step where you actually ask for an authorization code first. Okay. So uh, you will request and then uh, when you request for that authorization code, it will ask you to log into Marketing Cloud. Once that is validated, you will get an authorization code back. And using this authorization code, then you have to like ask for the access token. Okay, the Marketing Cloud Authorization ser uh, Server will then give you the access token provided uh, uh, with, with which you can actually then make your, your API call to the resource server. Okay, so as you would see earlier in server to server, uh, this first three steps are not there. Like, you know, so now because we are using it in user context, these additional three steps uh, need to be included for web and public app. Now for our series, we'll be using the server to server option. And for most of your integration needs, uh, you may uh, end up using the same as well. Okay, let's go ahead and click next. Okay, so uh, once you select server to server, you have to choose the scope. Now scope is nothing but the permissions that your API package allows. Uh, you can select the appropriate checkboxes um, to add the scope. And it's always recommended that uh, you open up only the scope that's needed. Uh, you always have the choice to like, you know, come in and, you know, add or remove scope at a later point in time by editing the component. Okay, so uh, what if you want to know, like, okay, what are the scope, um, you know, permissions that I need to give? So there is a URL, uh, which I'll post in the description as well, where you can see, like, okay, uh, for the specific routes uh, or if the, the specific permissions that I need, what are the different uh, API permission scopes uh, that I need to, like, you know, check? For instance, if I want to see journeys, let me scroll down to journeys. Uh, if you want to see the get uh, interaction versus uh, v1 interactions, that is like get the collection of all the journeys, I need to have the journey read permission. Okay, so that's how you can you can come to this URL and then figure out okay what are the different scope permissions that I would need uh, to be granted for the install package. So let me go ahead and you know select a few that we will end up using. Um, I will use email. Let me keep web for now. Uh, assets, automation, journeys, not delete. Uh, I will use the contacts. 
uh, marketing cloud connect data and files tracking yeah I think that should be it so I'll just uh, I've selected a few of the scope items that that we probably end up use using for um, uh, my rest API scenarios let me go ahead and click save and there you go so this is our um, you know API integration component that has now been added to our package as you can see here um, you know the the client ID and the client secret is now available um, there is a uh, integration type is server to server which is the one that we chose and then you will see the three uh, URIs uh, which we mentioned in the previous video the the auth uh, URI the rest URI and the SOAP URI so they're all tenant specific so this is our uh, subdomain for my uh, specific uh, marketing cloud account so it's my um, uh, tenant specific endpoint for the three URIs like the auth and the rest and the SOAP APIs and then you'll also see the scope items that we checked um, uh, right now when we created this component right so these are the different scopes that are available if you're trying to integrate with this install package now a uh, few things you need to keep in mind you can only add uh, one API integration component uh, to an install package right so we already added uh, the server to server um, let's say you want to come back and you think okay I can add a web and public app no you cannot do that so you can only add one API integration uh, component to a package and you have to choose which one it could be either a server to server uh, it could be a public or a web app one uh, so if you need a different like uh, public app uh, integration you have to create a new package right so keep that in mind like you know when you create the package you will only be able to add one API integration package and you need to choose which type it is okay. so let me cancel out of here also keep in mind that once you set up an installed package uh, it may be used by different systems or code that your team integrates uh, with marketing cloud so if you make any changes to the package like changing the scope please do know that uh, it will be available for all the other systems that are integrating with the same package. Now you can control the scope by specifying uh, the access in the scope parameter uh, when you request for the access token. Uh, but do, do note that like, you know, if, you, uh, if the requesting system uh, omits this parameter, then the system gets access to all the scope defined in this install package. For example, like uh, if you were to go to um, the access token, uh, so this is the um, access token request with the, the the JSON and you will see there's a scope parameter here it's optional actually so if you want to restrict um, you know the client to have only specific email access instead of the entire scope you can you can do that in your JSON uh, request when you actually ask for the token uh, and when you get the token back like and it'll it'll confirm that you know that's the um, the scope that's permitted for this particular request uh, but if you did not include the scope, um, the the requesting client will get access to everything that is available in this particular install package. So you need to keep that in mind. So if you have security concerns about the external system and do not wish uh, for them to have access to all the scope in the package, then for such use cases, it may be good to set up a separate install package with the reduced scope. Okay. Now the package we currently uh, created uh, is authorized for the current BU. Um, and if you want to be able to like you know give it access to other business units in your org you need to go to the access tab um, so if I go here you will say it's enabled for this particular BU but if I click on the other BUs that I have it's it's disabled so if you need to be able, uh, wanting to uh, you know provide access to other BUs to be uh, uh, to this particular install package then you need to be able to um, enable that over here under access and once you do that um, if you come back to our uh, access token request here you will see a parameter called account ID right so uh, by default if you don't specify account ID it will use the the uh, BU ID for where the the package is installed which is here in my case it is this particular BU uh, but um, if I specify uh, a, a different BU ID uh, then it will be actually getting the request uh, access token for that particular business unit uh, but again, it will check uh, does it have permission for that particular BU that you specified in the in the access token request If it does not it will actually give you an error. You will get a 401 unauthorized invalid client error So as you can see there is a documentation available as well um, on how to like request for the access token for the server-to-server -server integration and as you can see it's very simple uh, using the the 
uh, URI that we have here. Let me go back. So this is the auth URI. So anytime you want to like request the um, authorization token, the uh, sorry, the access token, or the authorization code, uh, you have to use the auth URI here. Okay. Uh, only after that, when you're re uh, requesting the resources, like you know, using REST or SOAP, you would use the specific endpoints uh, shown over here. Anytime for authorization, always use the auth uh, endpoint. Okay. Um, so if you want to use the um, the access token uh, request for server to server, uh, you can look at uh, the different um, uh, parameters that are, that you'll be using in the JSON. Um, the three that are required is the grant type, the client ID, and the client secret, which you can actually get from here. So the client ID and the client secrets are available here, uh, and uh, you can hard code this as grant type as client credentials. Okay, scope and account ID, you can leave it blank. Um, uh, it's up to you if you want to specify that. Uh, so once you do that, you will get the access token returned. Uh, and like I said, this is uh, valid for about 20 minutes. Um, so you have to um, uh, make sure that you refresh the token after about 18 minutes. Um, and that's the recommended best practice. Um, so you, your code can check like, okay, what, when did you uh, uh, last get the access token and if currently the time has expired more than 18 minutes go ahead and uh, request for a new access token right and when you get that you can use that access token in your next API request now for the uh, web and public app you have to use the authorization code request right so for a server to server the URL um, the route is v2 slash token um, but for authorization code uh, it's v2 slash authorize and so the first time you need to uh, send a response type for code uh, uh, along with the client ID and you will notice there's no client secret here okay and then a callback URI like after it after you log in it needs to you know redirect back to you uh, through a callback URI okay so you need to specify these three uh, in your uh, parameters here uh, and uh, don't get misled it's not JSON parameters it's actually the URL parameters so you need to specify that in the URL itself and once it authenticates uh, you will get the response back with the authorization code and once you have the authorization code uh, you can do a similar request with the like the v2 token only difference is this time instead of the client credentials you will be using the grant type as authorization code and then you'll specify the authorization code that you got from the previous step uh, here you can specify that here along with the client ID and the redirect URL and scope if you need to. Okay. Now for the public app, you don't have the client secret stored there, so you only use the client ID. But if it's a web app integration, uh, you need to specify the client secret as well. Okay. So that's the difference between these two. Um, and then once you get the access token, uh, you can use that for your um, API requests. And after it, it expires, you still need to refresh it, right? So for that, uh, you have to use the V2 uh, token again, but then grant type will be refresh token, okay? Uh, and you can use the client ID and the client secret. If it's web app, you will have the web, uh, the client secret, but if it's public app, you won't have the client secret. But then you have the refresh token parameter here. Uh, so don't get confused. This is the previous refresh token that you were using. So you can specify that and then it will give you the new token. Okay, so that is the steps that you need to use. So I'll, I'll specify the documentation for, uh, you know, how to get the access token and the authorization code for the web and public app, as well as for the, the server to server integrations uh, in the description of the video. Okay. Okay, so with that, we have covered how to set up the install package uh, in Marketing Cloud uh, in order to start working with the APIs. And I hope you got a good idea about the different integration types possible uh, with the install package, namely server to server, web and public app. Now in our future videos, we will look at how to configure external tools like uh, Postman and SOAP UI uh, in order to work with the API package that we just set up. Okay, thank you for watching.